remember I mentioned this, but you don't remember exactly which plug I told you to plug it into, you come here and you look at it. One says mic, one says line. It should be able, you know, gotcha. it, um, it should be understandable. Um, would you give me a hand? Back here we have some more mic inputs, just like that aux input here. If, um, if, if there was a scenario where you had more wired mics up here, I'm trying to think, what type of service would have a bunch of people? Well, well we, we've had, say for example, if we have conversation or a lecture uh, or a panel, exactly. we have multiple chairs up here, we might have mics. That yep, that's, that's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. So if you have only three, there's three mic inputs, but if you have eight, well, there's not eight mic inputs here, so you get a little submixer and you plug the eight microphones into the submixer and the submixer into that line level input. You know, so you sort of have for just a just a small panel panel discussion, you have up to three. I think there's a couple there, and that aux one is one available as well. So you can get up. You got three right. Here. Yeah, so you can get up to six mics without needing the submixer. Six plus this one. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, but if you if you overflew that number, if you had 8 or 12 or whatever, um, then you get an external submixer, just like the praise band example, and you plug it directly into the line input. Um, additionally, at this location, they there were, there were installed here, there's mute switches. They're installed here with the thought that the person wearing the wireless mics would be sitting in these chairs, and they're wireless mic mutes. All they do is they mute one particular wireless mic. <laughs> um, and so, so that's like for the lavalier. Exactly. Oh. So when whoever, if they, you know, if I got a cough today and I don't want to bother, the, you know, the, the person speaking at the pulpit, I can sit with my wireless and mute my own mic. Lucy's always going into her robe trying to cut it off when she, and then cut it back on before she goes back down. All she has to do is flick this. Well, you got to flick the right one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it... it Try, try it in advance, you know, don't try, uh, when you're setting up in the morning, you can certainly do some experimentation. But yes, wireless mic 14, and I think that one says 13. So, or this will tell me Where are one. the lava, where are the lava? They're stored downstairs, so we're, we're going to see them in a moment. Okay. I'm sorry, 14 and 15. So this one's 14 and that one must be 15. Okay. Um, which means the wireless mics are labeled 1 and 2. One, wireless 1 would be 14 and wireless 2 would be 15. So if she knows which one she's wearing, or... If she sits in one of these seats regularly, you know, we can make sure that she wears the one associated with this switch. And that's exactly what they were installed for. But that was quite a while ago and it sort of fell out of favor. And for, I forget why, but for some reason they, they didn't want to use them. And if going into the robes and switching the belt pack is easier for her because it's a confidence thing, you know, she knows the feel of which way the switch is, then, you know, then, then that's up to her to decide. But they are available. Here's where you can get caught too, because I got a service call once where, oh, the wireless aren't working. The switch was down and nobody knew about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's news to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's new, yeah. How long has it been? Since before I worked with the company. Yeah, like 15 years. Yeah, very Did Peter do that? He didn't believe in wireless mics. He refused to wear one. That's part of the problem. Okay. Um, this is a monitor that was added um, after the fact because, again, because of architectural restrictions, I mean, there, there is some ability to mount some hidden monitors here, but it was decided that there was only one person, particular person, that was really concerned about it. So rather than, you know, rather than a large construction level type of installation, we decided to just get the one, the one monitor and we put this, the one plate here. So this is actually an output. If you, if you look, you'll notice that the, the connector is different. It's the mating connector to the ones that are mic inputs. So this output is labeled line to monitor. Line meaning line level, the same professional output level, and to the monitor intended here. So it gets a feed of the pulpit and lectern mics, and you know, it gets a feed of everything. Um, pulpit and lectern mostly, but the wireless, and if, but if you plugged in extra choir mics or if you plugged in additional mics, it would also come with this monitor. That's the only line to feed. I don't see one over Correct. here. Correct. Correct. This was there. added after the fact for a specific... For Dorothy. Yeah, I don't know. Specifically, who, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, and it, allows, it allows that person their own volume control um, so that, you know, 
if a different person sits there that yeah. day, you know, they, can, they don't need it or they want it louder, it allows them to use their own volume control. But even, even with just the one monitor, um, you know, we found that there was a maximum level. And you, you'll find it because <laughs> the room will start to squeal. But the sound from the monitor gets picked up by the microphone when somebody's speaking at it, gets re-amplified, comes out the monitor again, gets picked up by the microphone again, that's and that's causing a feedback loop. Right, and that, so that's, that's when it'll start to squeal. Um, but is there any way to, so say that happens during a service, there, we've got that up, we're in a service, obviously we don't want to all of a sudden turn around, pull out the chair. Right. Um, is there any way to shut that off remotely elsewhere? No. Okay, so the only way we could control if we Correct. got some sort of feedback Correct. from that yeah. would be to reach back there and... Well, when the chair's here, the volume control is at, is at uh, you know, convenient yeah, height. Yeah, right, okay. Um, but feedback is not something that just sort of pops up out of nowhere. Yeah. It happens only when you change something, really. So only if the person sitting here is cranking the volume all of a sudden. Okay. Or, you know, so if it was working 10 minutes ago, it's not going to all of a sudden Seven. feedback okay. right now. All right. All right, so that's all the physical stuff I wanted to point out. Um, so let's go downstairs. I'll just introduce you to the rack, which pretty much means here's the CD player and don't touch anything. Then the wireless <laughs> are stored down there. And I'll, oh, sorry, did you want to? Yeah, I just wanted to. And so, um, you know, we'll bring the wireless out. We'll come back up here. We'll hear how they sound. And, and you know, you guys can stand in the under balcony while I speak at the pulpit. And you can hear how the under balcony speakers, you know, just by bringing them to your attention today, the hope is that, let's say you're standing back there and you don't hear it, you know, and you know from training that you were supposed to hear it, you know, then that could be a problem. And so, help, not only do I want you guys to feel comfortable running an event, you're also my first defense as far as keeping the system, you know, in tip-top shape. And so, um, not, not being here during services, you know, I can't, he I can't hear what you guys are hearing if you're, if you're hearing it live. Um, you know, services every Sunday are one thing, but special events are also, um, you know, are also critical. So, any time, you guys know more than I do about the weird stuff that you're going to see, like the panels, like that's an excellent example, but, um, or I don't know if you do get guest praise bands or anything like that, but I, so please, I'm encouraging your questions. If you do have any, oh, last year we had that one thing that was, you know, or last, you know, next, coming up, you know, you can tell me about these, we, you said you have a bunch of, uh, um, special events coming up, uh, obviously commencement season, um, so we can talk through them to make sure that you're you're comfortable not just for day-to-day -day operation, but for the impending special events. Okay. Um, now, if they're if they're big and special but not complicated, then it's easy. You just turn on the system and you turn up the volume to eight instead of seven, uh, because let's say you fill, or and by the end of today, I'll make sure that the overflow is working, and so that'll be um, that'll be operational. We have mics down here when there's a concert, right? When you guys are singing up here, and those and then the, those are the mics on the big stands? Well, the, Tony DeVarzo comes in and does that, so he kind of brings in his own stuff. But if okay. we need to do it in-house, which we did- I saw Richard stuff. doing it. <coughs> he did for a couple of weeks, and plugged them in there, and then went down. So, right, yeah. yeah. So in addition to recording, uh, again, they called out on the drawing. In, in, yeah, down here, I don't know if you were with okay. us when we passed this. I'm okay. But a couple of these, yeah, I had to steal one of these in order to make Appleton Chapel work. So one of these is not operational. One of them's for recording. And then actually two of them are live in the house. So when I said those are all recording, well, there's also two live in the house. Mm -hmm. um, but six up on, on, on the altar itself. Okay. Any questions at this point? I have a question about, can a live band perform here? Like yeah, drums and... Yeah.